A spacesuit is a garment worn to keep a human alive in the harsh environment of outer space, vacuum and temperature extremes. Spacesuits are often worn inside spacecraft as a safety precaution in case of loss of cabin pressure, and are necessary for extravehicular activity EVA, work done outside spacecraft. Spacesuits have been worn for such work in Earth orbit, on the surface of the Moon, and en route back to Earth from the Moon. Modern space suits augment the basic pressure garment with a complex system of equipment and environmental systems designed to keep the wearer comfortable, and to minimize the effort required to bend the limbs, resisting a soft pressure garment's natural tendency to stiffen against the vacuum. A self-contained oxygen supply and environmental control system is frequently employed to allow complete freedom of movement, independent of the spacecraft. Three types of spacesuits exist for different purposes, EVA intravehicular activity, EVA extravehicular activity, and IEVA intra -extravehicular activity. EVA suits are meant to be worn inside a pressurized spacecraft, and are therefore lighter and more comfortable. IEVA suits are meant for use inside and outside the spacecraft, such as the Gemini G4C suit. They include more protection from the harsh conditions of space, such as protection from micrometeorites and extreme temperature change. EVA suits, such as the EMU, are used outside spacecraft, for either planetary exploration or spacewalks. They must protect the wearer against all conditions of space, as well as provide mobility and functionality. Some of these requirements also apply to pressure suits worn for other specialized tasks, such as high altitude reconnaissance flight. At altitudes above the Armstrong limit, around 19,000 meters feet, water boils at body temperature and pressurized suits are needed. The first full pressure suits for use at extreme altitudes were designed by individual inventors as early as the 1930s. The first space suit worn by a human in space was the Soviet SK-1 suit worn by Yuri Gagarin in 1961. Topic. Requirements A spacesuit must perform several functions to allow its occupant to work safely and comfortably, inside or outside a spacecraft. It must provide a stable internal pressure. This can be less than Earth's atmosphere, as there is usually no need for the spacesuit to carry nitrogen which comprises about 78% of Earth's atmosphere and is not used by the body. Lower pressure allows for greater mobility, but requires the suit occupant to breathe pure oxygen for a time before going into this lower pressure, to avoid decompression sickness. Mobility. Movement is typically opposed by the pressure of the suit. Mobility is achieved by careful joint design. See the theories of space suit design section. Supply of breathable oxygen and elimination of carbon dioxide, these gases are exchanged with the spacecraft or a portable life support system PLSS. Temperature regulation. Unlike on Earth, where heat can be transferred by convection to the atmosphere, in space, heat can be lost only by thermal radiation or by conduction to objects in physical contact with the exterior of the suit. Since the temperature on the outside of the suit varies greatly between sunlight and shadow, the suit is heavily insulated, and air temperature is maintained at a comfortable level. A communication system, with external electrical connection to the spacecraft or PLSS Means of collecting and containing solid and liquid bodily waste such as a maximum absorbency garment Topic. Secondary requirements. Advanced suits better regulate the astronaut's temperature with a liquid cooling and ventilation garment LCVG in contact with the astronaut's skin, from which the heat is dumped into space through an external radiator in the PLSS. Additional requirements for EVA include Shielding against ultraviolet radiation Limited shielding against particle radiation Means to maneuver, dock, release, and or tether onto a spacecraft protection against small micrometeoroids, some traveling at up to 27,000 km per hour, provided by a puncture-resistant thermal micrometeoroid garment, which is the outermost layer of the suit. 
Experience has shown the greatest chance of exposure occurs near the gravitational field of a moon or planet, so these were first employed on the Apollo Lunar EVA suits see United States suit models below, as part of astronautical hygiene control i.e., protecting astronauts from extremes of temperature, radiation, etc. A space suit is essential for extravehicular activity. The Apollo, Skylab A7L suit included 11 layers in all, an inner liner, a LCVG, a pressure bladder, a restraint layer, another liner, and a thermal micrometeoroid garment consisting of five aluminized insulation layers and an external layer of white orthofabric. This space suit is capable of protecting the astronaut from temperatures ranging from minus 156 degrees Celsius minus 249 degrees Fahrenheit to 121 degrees Celsius 250 degrees Fahrenheit. .During exploration of the Moon or Mars, there will be the potential for lunar, Martian dust to be retained on the space suit. When the space suit is removed on return to the spacecraft, there will be the potential for the dust to contaminate surfaces and increase the risks of inhalation and skin exposure. Astronautical hygienists are testing materials with reduced dust retention times and the potential to control the dust exposure risks during planetary exploration. Novel ingress, egress approaches, such as suit ports, are being explored as well. In NASA space suits, communications are provided via a cap worn over the head, which includes earphones and a microphone. Due to the coloration of the version used for Apollo and Skylab, which resembled the coloration of the comic strip character Snoopy, these caps became known as Snoopy caps. <laughs> <laughs> Operating pressure Generally, to supply enough oxygen for respiration, a space suit using pure oxygen must have a pressure of about 32.4 kPa 4.7 psi, equal to the 20.7 kPa 3.0 psi partial pressure of oxygen in the Earth's atmosphere at sea level, plus 5.3 kPa 0.77 psi CO2 and 6.3 kPa 0.91 psi water vapor pressure, both of which must be subtracted from the alveolar pressure to get alveolar oxygen partial pressure in 100% oxygen atmospheres, by the alveolar gas equation. The latter two figures add to 11.6 kPa 87 Tor, 1.7 psi, which is why many modern space suits do not use 20.7 kPa 160 Tor, 3.0 psi, but 32.4 kPa 240 Tor, 4.7 psi This is a slight overcorrection, as alveolar partial pressures at sea level are slightly less than the former. In space suits that use 20.7 kPa, the astronaut gets only 20.7 kPa minus 11.7 kPa equals 9.0 kPa of oxygen, which is about the alveolar oxygen partial pressure attained at an altitude of 1,860 m above sea level. This is about 78% of normal partial pressure of oxygen at sea level, about the same as pressure in a commercial passenger jet aircraft, and is the realistic lower limit for safe ordinary space suit pressurization which allows reasonable capacity for work. When space suits below a specific operating pressure are used from craft that are pressurized to normal atmospheric pressure such as the space shuttle, this requires astronauts to pre-breathe meaning pre-breathe pure oxygen for a period before donning their suits and depressurizing in the air lock. This procedure purges the body of dissolved nitrogen, so as to avoid decompression sickness due to rapid depressurization from a nitrogen-containing atmosphere. <laughs> Physical effects of unprotected space exposure The human body can briefly survive the hard vacuum of space unprotected, despite contrary depictions in some popular science fiction. Human flesh expands to about twice its size in such conditions, giving the visual effect of a bodybuilder rather than an overfilled balloon. Consciousness is retained for up to 15 seconds as the effects of oxygen starvation set in. No snap freeze effect occurs because all heat must be lost through thermal radiation or the evaporation of liquids, and the blood does not boil because it remains pressurized within the body. In space, there are many different highly energized subatomic protons that will expose the body to extreme radiation. 
Although these compounds are minimal in amount, their high energy is liable to disrupt essential physical and chemical processes in the body, such as altering DNA or causing cancers. Exposure to radiation can create problems via two methods. The particles can react with water in the human body to produce free radicals that break DNA molecules apart, or by directly breaking the DNA molecules. Temperature in space can vary extremely depending on where the Sun is. Temperatures from solar radiation can reach up to 250 degrees Fahrenheit degrees Celsius and lower down to minus 387 degrees Fahrenheit minus 233 degrees Celsius. Because of this, space suits must provide proper insulation and cooling. The vacuum in space creates zero pressure, causing the gases and processes in the body to expand. In order to prevent chemical processes in the body from overreacting, it is necessary to develop a suit that counteracts against the pressure in space. The greatest danger is in attempting to hold one's breath before exposure, as the subsequent explosive decompression can damage the lungs. These effects have been confirmed through various accidents including in very high altitude conditions, outer space and training vacuum chambers. Human skin does not need to be protected from vacuum and is gas tight by itself. Instead, it only needs to be mechanically compressed to retain its normal shape. This can be accomplished with a tight-fitting elastic body suit and a helmet for containing breathing gases, known as a space activity suit SAS. <laughs> <laughs> Design concepts A space suit should allow its user natural unencumbered movement. Nearly all designs try to maintain a constant volume no matter what movements the wearer makes. This is because mechanical work is needed to change the volume of a constant pressure system. If flexing a joint reduces the volume of the space suit, then the astronaut must do extra work every time he bends that joint, and he has to maintain a force to keep the joint bent. Even if this force is very small, it can be seriously fatiguing to constantly fight against one's suit. It also makes delicate movements very difficult. The work required to bend a joint is dictated by the formula W equals V I V F P D V Display style W equals int underscore V underscore I carrot V underscore F P D V where V and VF are respectively the initial and final volume of the joint, P is the pressure in the suit, and W is the resultant work. It is generally true that all suits are more mobile at lower pressures. However, because a minimum internal pressure is dictated by life support requirements, the only means of further reducing work is to minimize the change in volume. All space suit designs try to minimize or eliminate this problem. The most common solution is to form the suit out of multiple layers. The bladder layer is a rubbery, airtight layer much like a balloon. The restraint layer goes outside the bladder, and provides a specific shape for the suit. Since the bladder layer is larger than the restraint layer, the restraint takes all of the stresses caused by the pressure inside the suit. Since the bladder is not under pressure, it will not pop like a balloon, even if punctured. The restraint layer is shaped in such a way that bending a joint causes pockets of fabric, called gauze to open up on the outside of the joint, while folds called convolutes fold up on the inside of the joint. The gauze make up for the volume lost on the inside of the joint, and keep the suit at a nearly constant volume. However, once the gauze are opened all the way, the joint cannot be bent any further without a considerable amount of work. In some Russian space suits, strips of cloth were wrapped tightly around the cosmonaut's arms and legs outside the space suit to stop the space suit from ballooning when in space. The outermost layer of a space suit, the thermal micrometeoroid garment, provides thermal insulation, protection from micrometeoroids, and shielding from harmful solar radiation. There are four main conceptual approaches to suit design. Topic. Soft suits Soft suits typically are made mostly of fabrics. All soft suits have some hard parts, some even have hard joint bearings. Intravehicular activity and early EVA suits were soft suits. <laughs> hard shell suits 
Hard shell suits are usually made of metal or composite materials and do not use fabric for joints. Hard suits joints use ball bearings and wedge ring segments similar to an adjustable elbow of a stovepipe to allow a wide range of movement with the arms and legs. The joints maintain a constant volume of air internally and do not have any counter force. Therefore, the astronaut does not need to exert to hold the suit in any position. Hard suits can also operate at higher pressures which would eliminate the need for an astronaut to pre-breathe oxygen to use a 34 kPa psi space suit before an EVA from a 101 kPa psi spacecraft cabin. The joints may get into a restricted or locked position requiring the astronaut to manipulate or program the joint. The NASA Ames Research Center Experimental Axe 5 hard shell space suit had a flexibility rating of 95%. The wearer could move into 95% of the positions he or she could while nude. <laughs> <laughs> Hybrid suits Hybrid suits have hard shell parts and fabric parts. NASA's Extravehicular Mobility Unit uses a fiberglass hard upper torso hut and fabric limbs. ILC Dover's eye suit replaces the hut with a fabric soft upper torso to save weight, restricting the use of hard components to the joint bearings, helmet, waist seal, and rear entry hatch. Virtually all workable space suit designs incorporate hard components, particularly at interfaces such as the waist seal, bearings, and in the case of rear entry suits, the back hatch, where all soft alternatives are not viable. <laughs> Skin-tight suits Skin-tight suits, also known as mechanical counterpressure suits or space activity suits, are a proposed design which would use a heavy elastic body stocking to compress the body. The head is in a pressurized helmet, but the rest of the body is pressurized only by the elastic effect of the suit. This mitigates the constant volume problem, reduces the possibility of a space suit depressurization and gives a very lightweight suit. When not worn, the elastic garments may appear to be that of clothing for a small child. These suits may be very difficult to put on and face problems with providing a uniform pressure. Most proposals use the body's natural perspiration to keep cool. Sweat evaporates readily in vacuum and may desublime or deposit on objects nearby, optics, sensors, the astronaut's visor, and other surfaces. The icy film and sweat residue may contaminate sensitive surfaces and affect optical performance. Topic. Contributing technologies Related preceding technologies include the gas mask used in World War II, the oxygen mask used by pilots of high-flying bombers in World War II, the high-altitude or vacuum suit required by pilots of the Lockheed U-2 and SR-71 Blackbird, the diving suit, rebreather, scuba diving gear, and many others. Many space suit designs are taken from the U.S. Air Force suits, which are designed to work in high-altitude aircraft pressure S, such as the Mercury EVA suit or the Gemini G-4C, or the advanced crew escape suits. <laughs> <laughs> Glove technology The Mercury EVA, the first U.S. space suit design, included lights at the tips of the gloves in order to provide visual aid. As the need for extravehicular activity grew, suits such as the Apollo A7L included gloves made of a metal fabric called chromal R in order to prevent punctures. In order to retain a better sense of touch for the astronauts, the fingertips of the gloves were made of silicone. With the shuttle program, it became necessary to be able to operate spacecraft modules, so the Aces suits featured gripping on the gloves. EMU gloves, which are used for spacewalks, are heated to keep the astronauts' hands warm. The Phase 6 gloves, meant for use with the Mark III suit, are the first gloves to be designed with laser scanning technology, 3D computer modeling, stereolithography, laser cutting technology and CNC machining. This allows for cheaper, more accurate production, as well as increased detail in joint mobility and flexibility. Topic: <laughs> Life support technology. 
Prior to the Apollo missions, life support in spacesuits was connected to the space capsule via an umbilical cord like device. However, with the Apollo missions, life support was configured into a removable capsule called the Portable Life Support System that allowed the astronaut to explore the Moon without having to be attached to the spacecraft. The EMU spacesuit, used for spacewalks, allows the astronaut to manually control the internal environment of the suit. The Mark III suit has a backpack filled with about 12 pounds of liquid air, as well as pressurization and heat exchange. <laughs> Helmet technology The development of the spheroidal dome helmet was key in balancing the need for field of view, pressure compensation, and low weight. One inconvenience with some space suits is the head being fixed facing forwards and being unable to turn to look sideways. Astronauts call this effect alligator head. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> High altitude suits. Evgeny Chertovsky created his full pressure suit or high altitude scaphander. Scaphander in 1931. Scaphander also means diving apparatus. Emilio Herrera Linas designed and built a full pressure suit, Escafandra Estratonautica, in 1935, which was to have been used during an open basket balloon stratospheric flight scheduled for early 1936. Wiley Post experimented with a number of pressure suits for record breaking flights. Russell Colley created the space suits worn by the Project Mercury astronauts, including fitting Alan Shepard for his ride as America's first man in space on May 5, 1961. <laughs> <laughs> Models of historical significance <laughs> Soviet and Russian suit models SK series CK the space suit used for the Vostok program 1961 to 1963 worn by Yuri Gagarin on the first manned space flight no pressure suits were worn aboard Voskhod 1 Burkut Burkut equals Golden Eagle the space suit was a modified SK1 used by the crew of Voskhod 2 which included Alexei Leonov on the first spacewalk during 1965 from Soyuz 1 to Soyuz 11 1967 to 1971 no pressure suits were worn during launch and re-entry. Yastreb Astreb equals Hawk extravehicular activity space suit used during a crew exchange between Soyuz 4 and Soyuz 5 1969. Krechet 94 Crescent equals Jerfalcon space suit, designed for the cancelled Soviet manned moon landing. Stride Striz equals Swift Bird spacesuit developed for pilots of the Buran Space Shuttle. Sokol Sokol equals Falcon suits worn by Soyuz crew members during launch and re-entry. They were first worn on Soyuz 12. They have been used from 1973 to present. Orlan Orlan equals Sea Eagle or Bald Eagle. Suits for extravehicular activity, originally developed for the Soviet lunar program as a lunar orbit EVA suit. It is Russia's current EVA suit. Used from 1977 to present. <laughs> <laughs> United States suit models in the early 1950s, Siegfried Hansen and colleagues at Litton Industries designed and built a working hard shell suit, which was used inside vacuum chambers and was the predecessor of space suits used in NASA missions. Navy Mark IV high altitude vacuum suit used for Project Mercury 1961 to 1963. Gemini space suits 1965-1966. There were three main variants developed. G3C designed for intra-vehicle use, G4C specially designed for EVA and intra-vehicle use, and a special G5C suit worn by the Gemini 7 crew for 14 days inside the spacecraft. Manned Orbital Laboratory MH7 spacesuits for the cancelled MOL program. 
Apollo Block IA-1 C suit was a derivative of the Gemini suit, worn by primary and backup crews in training for two early Apollo missions. The nylon pressure garment melted and burned through in the Apollo 1 cabin fire. This suit became obsolete when manned Block I Apollo flights were discontinued after the fire. Apollo, Skylab A-7 L EVA and Moon suits the Block II Apollo suit was the primary pressure suit worn for 11 Apollo flights, three Skylab flights, and the U.S. astronauts on the Apollo Soyuz test project between 1968 and 1975. The pressure garment's nylon outer layer was replaced with fireproof beta cloth after the Apollo 1 fire. This suit was the first to employ a liquid cooled inner garment and outer micrometeroid garment. Shuttle ejection escape suit used from STS-1 to STS-4 by a two-man crew used in conjunction with the then-installed ejection seats. Derived from a USAF model. These were removed once the shuttle became certified. From STS-5 to STS-25 no pressure suits were worn during launch and re-entry. The crew would wear only a blue flight suit with an oxygen helmet. Launch entry suit first used on STS-26 the first flight after the Challenger disaster. It was a partial pressure suit derived from a USAF model. It was used from 1988 to 1998. Advanced crew escape suit used on the Space Shuttle starting in 1994. The Advanced Crew Escape Suit or ACES suit, is a full pressure suit worn by all Space Shuttle crews for the ascent and entry portions of flight. The suit is a direct descendant of the United States Air Force high-altitude pressure suits worn by SR-71 Blackbird and U-2 spy plane pilots, North American X-15 and Gemini pilot astronauts, and the launch entry suits worn by NASA astronauts starting on the STS-26 flight. It is derived from a USAF model. Extravehicular Mobility Unit used on both the Space Shuttle and International Space Station ISS. The EMU is an independent anthropomorphic system that provides environmental protection, mobility, life support, and communications for a space shuttle or ISS crew member to perform an EVA in Earth orbit. Used from 1982 to present. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Chinese suit models. Shu Guang space suit. First generation EVA spacesuit developed by China for the 1967 cancelled Project 714 manned space program. With a mass of about 10 kg of orange color, made of high resistance multi layers polyester fabric. The astronaut could use it inside the cabin and conduct an EVA as well. Project 863 spacesuit. Cancelled project of second generation Chinese EVA spacesuit. Shenzhou EVA Shenzhou space suit. The suit was first worn by Yang Liwei on Shenzhou 5, the first manned Chinese space flight. It closely resembles a Sokol KV-2 suit, but it is believed to be a Chinese-made version rather than an actual Russian suit. Pictures show that the suits on Shenzhou 6 differ in detail from the earlier suit, they are also reported to be lighter. Heying Haiying Hao Hang Tian Fu EVA space suit. The imported Russian Orlan M EVA suit is called Heying. Used on Shenzhou 7. Faishan Fei Tian Hao Hang Tian Fu EVA space suit. New generation indigenously developed Chinese made EVA space suit also used for the Shenzhou 7 mission. The suit was designed for a spacewalk mission of up to 7 hours. Chinese astronauts have been training in the out of capsule space suits since July 2007, and movements are seriously restricted in the suits, with a mass of more than 110 kg each. Topic. Emerging technologies Several companies and universities are developing technologies and prototypes which represent improvements over current space suits. Topic. Additive manufacturing 3D printing additive manufacturing can be used to reduce the mass of hard shell spacesuits while retaining the high mobility they provide. 
This fabrication method also allows for the potential for in situ fabrication and repair of suits, a capability which is not currently available, but will likely be necessary for Martian exploration. The University of Maryland began development of a prototype 3D printed hard suit in 2016, based on the kinematics of the Axe 5. The prototype arm segment is designed to be evaluated in the Space Systems Laboratory Glovebox to compare mobility to traditional soft suits. Initial research has focused on the feasibility of printing rigid suit elements, bearing races, ball bearings, seals, and sealing surfaces. <laughs> Astronaut glove challenge There are certain difficulties in designing a dexterous space suit glove and there are limitations to the current designs. For this reason, the Centennial Astronaut Glove Challenge was created to build a better glove. Competitions have been held in 2007 and 2009, and another is planned. The 2009 contest required the glove to be covered with a micro-meteorite layer. Auda X Since 2009, the Austrian Space Forum has been developing Auda X, an experimental Mars analog space suit focusing on an advanced human machine interface and onboard computing network to increase situational awareness. The suit is designed to study contamination vectors in planetary exploration analog environments and create limitations depending on the pressure regime chosen for a simulation. Since 2012, for the Mars 2013 analog mission by the Austrian Space Forum to Erfud, Morocco, the Auda X analog space suit has a sister in the form of Auda S. This is a slightly less sophisticated suit meant primarily to assist Auda X operations and be able to study the interactions between two analog astronauts in similar suits. The Auda X and Auda S space suits have been named after the fictional princess from the Jules Verne's 1873 novel Around the World in 80 Days and can be followed on Facebook. A public display mock-up of Auda X called Auda D is currently on display at the Dachstein Ice Cave in Obertraun, Austria, after the experiments done there in 2012. Topic: <laughs> Bio suit BioSuit is a space activity suit under development at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, which as of 2006 consisted of several lower leg prototypes. BioSuit is custom fit to each wearer, using laser body scanning. <laughs> <laughs> Constellation Space Suit System On August 2, 2006, NASA indicated plans to issue a request for proposal RFP for the design, development, certification, production, and sustaining engineering of the Constellation spacesuit to meet the needs of the Constellation program. NASA foresees a single suit capable of supporting, survivability during launch, entry and abort, zero-gravity EVA, lunar surface EVA, and Mars surface EVA. On June 11, 2008, NASA awarded a USD $745 million contract to Oceaneering International to create the new space suit. <laughs> Final Frontier Design EVA space suit Final Frontier Design FFD is developing a commercial full EVA space suit, with their first suit completed in 2010. FFD's suits are intended as a lightweight, highly mobile, and inexpensive commercial space suits. Since 2011, FFD has upgraded EVA suits designs, hardware, processes, and capabilities. FFD has built a total of seven EVA space suit 2016 assemblies for various institutions and customers since founding, and has conducted high-fidelity human testing in simulators, aircraft, microgravity, and hypobrick chambers. FFD has a Space Act agreement with NASA's Commercial Space Capabilities Office to develop and execute a human rating plan for FFD EVA suit. FFD categorizes their EVA suits according to their mission, Terra for Earth-based testing, Stratos for high-altitude flights, and Exos for orbital space flights. Each suit category has different requirements for manufacturing controls, validations, and materials, but are of a similar architecture.
Topic: I suit. The iSuit is a space suit prototype also constructed by ILC Dover, which incorporates several design improvements over the EMU, including a weight-saving soft upper torso. Both the Mark III and the iSuit have taken part in NASA's annual Desert Research and Technology Studies field trials, during which suit occupants interact with one another, and with rovers and other equipment. Mark III. The Mark III is a NASA prototype, constructed by ILC Dover, which incorporates a hard lower torso section and a mix of soft and hard components. The Mark III is markedly more mobile than previous suits, despite its high operating pressure 57 kPa or 8.3 psi, which makes it a zero prebreathe suit, meaning that astronauts would be able to transition directly from a one-atmosphere, mixed-gas space station environment, such as that on the International Space Station, to the suit, without risking decompression sickness, which can occur with rapid depressurization from an atmosphere containing nitrogen or another inert gas. <laughs> MX-2 The MX-2 is a space suit analog constructed at the University of Maryland's Space Systems Laboratory. The MX-2 is used for manned neutral buoyancy testing at the Space Systems Lab's Neutral Buoyancy Research Facility. By approximating the work envelope of a real EVA suit, without meeting the requirements of a flight-rated suit, the MX-2 provides an inexpensive platform for EVA research, compared to using EMU suits at facilities like NASA's Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory. The MX-2 has an operating pressure of 2.5 to 4 psi. It is a rear-entry suit, featuring a fiberglass hut. Air, LCVG cooling water, and power are open-loop systems, provided through an umbilical. The suit contains a Mac Mini computer to capture sensor data, such as suit pressure, inlet and outlet air temperatures, and heart rate. Resizable suit elements and adjustable ballast allow the suit to accommodate subjects ranging in height from 68 to 75 inches, 170 to 190 centimeters, and with a weight range of 120 pounds, 54 kilograms. Topic: <laughs> North Dakota suit. Beginning in May 2006, five North Dakota colleges collaborated on a new space suit prototype, funded by a USD $100,000 grant from NASA, to demonstrate technologies which could be incorporated into a planetary suit. The suit was tested in the Theodore Roosevelt National Park Badlands of western North Dakota. The suit has a mass of 47 pounds 21 kilograms without a life support backpack, and costs only a fraction of the standard USD $12 million cost for a flight-rated NASA space suit. The suit was developed in just over a year by students from the University of North Dakota, North Dakota State, Dickinson State, the State College of Science and Turtle Mountain Community College. The mobility of the North Dakota suit can be attributed to its low operating pressure, while the North Dakota suit was field tested at a pressure of 1 psi 6.9 kilopascals, 52 tor differential. NASA's EMU suit operates at a pressure of 4.7 psi 32 kilopascals, 240 tor, a pressure designed to supply approximately sea level oxygen partial pressure for respiration. See discussion above. PXS NASA's prototype exploration suit, PXS, like the Z-Series, is a rear-entry suit compatible with suitports. The suit has components which could be 3D printed during missions to a range of specifications, to fit different individuals or changing mobility requirements. SpaceX suit. In February 2015, SpaceX began developing a space suit for astronauts to wear within the Dragon 2 space capsule. The first images of the suit were revealed in September 2017. A mannequin wore the SpaceX space suit during the maiden launch of the Falcon Heavy in February 2018. According to Musk, the SpaceX suit is intended for intravehicular activity use only type meant to be worn inside a pressurized spacecraft. 
For this exhibition launch, the suit was not pressurized and carried no sensors. In 2018, NASA commercial crew astronauts Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley tested the spacesuit inside the Dragon 2 spacecraft in order to familiarize themselves with the suit. Topic: <laughs> Suit ports. A suit port is a theoretical alternative to an airlock, designed for use in hazardous environments and in human spaceflight, especially planetary surface exploration. In a suit port system, a rear entry spacesuit is attached and sealed against the outside of a spacecraft, such that an astronaut can enter and seal up the suit, then go on EVA, without the need for an airlock or depressurizing the spacecraft cabin. Suit ports require less mass and volume than airlocks, provide dust mitigation, and prevent cross-contamination of the inside and outside environments. Patents for suit port designs were filed in 1996 by Philip Culbertson Jr. of NASA's Ames Research Center and in 2003 by Jörg Bocher, Stephen Ransom, and Frank Steinzeek. Z series. In 2012, NASA introduced the Z-1 space suit, the first in the Z-series of space suit prototypes designed by NASA specifically for planetary extravehicular activity. The Z-1 space suit includes an emphasis on mobility and protection for space missions. It features a soft torso versus the hard torsos seen in previous NASA EVA space suits, which provides reduced mass. It has been labeled the Buzz Lightyear suit due to its green streaks for a design. In 2014, NASA released the design for the Z-2 prototype, the next model in the Z-series. NASA conducted a poll asking the public to decide on a design for the Z-2 space suit. The designs, created by fashion students from Philadelphia University, were technology, trends in society, and biomimicry. The design, technology, one, and the prototype is built with technologies like 3D printing. The Z2 suit will also differ from the Z1 suit in that the torso reverts to the hard shell, as seen in NASA's EMU suit. Topic: In fiction. The earliest space fiction ignored the problems of traveling through a vacuum and launched its heroes through space without any special protection. In the later 19th century, however, a more realistic brand of space fiction emerged, in which authors have tried to describe or depict the space suits worn by their characters. These fictional suits vary in appearance and technology, and range from the highly authentic to the utterly improbable. A very early fictional account of space suits can be seen in Garrett P. Service novel Edison's Conquest of Mars 1898. Later comic book series such as Buck Rogers 1930s and Dan Dare 1950s also featured their own takes on spacesuit design. Science fiction authors such as Robert A. Heinlein contributed to the development of fictional spacesuit concepts. See also Effect of spaceflight on the human body Extravehicular activity, lists By era List of spacewalks and moonwalks 1965-1999 List of spacewalks 2000-2014 By station List of mere spacewalks List of International Space Station spacewalks List of cumulative spacewalk records Manned maneuvering unit <laughs>